Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. We begin the new year with lingering drought. Even though it hasn't been this severe in decades, dry weather is nothing new for Oklahoma. For a closer look, here's SUNUP's Austin Moore. Weather is always on the minds of Oklahoma ag producers, in part because of our state's past, but these days because of our present as well. Take a look at the climate data section of the Oklahoma Mesonet website, and you'll find this precipitation history map, which charts Oklahoma's annual rainfall since before statehood. What you see is long periods of drier than normal weather, followed by a series of wet years, followed by another drought. It's cyclical and somewhat patterned. That is, until the 1980s arrived, and the drought seemed to have gone away. We've had a whole generation of people that's grown up in an unusually wet and consistently wet period over the last 30 years or so. Um, so, you know, a lot of our infrastructure, a lot of our knowledge is based on what we've seen over the last 30 years. And that 30 year period is anything but typical of Oklahoma's recorded history. People today, they go to the spigot, they turn it on, and water comes out. It's a vastly different situation than they saw in the 1930s and 1950s. So we got a generation of producers, ag lenders, extension educators, state specialists that have never lived through a long-term drought. Now, having wet weather is nothing to complain about. But DeVeast warns that this kind weather pattern may have encouraged financial behavior that is today putting producers at risk. You've got a generation of producers that may have taken out loans based on a repayment capacity of weather that looks like 2005, 2010, you know, stocking rates were good, our summer crops generally did well, and now we're looking at stocking rates that might be half what they are were previously during that wet period, and so your repayment capacity if it's based on that stocking rate, it's not going to work anymore. If it was based on dual cropping, if we can't get a summer crop out, it's not, that repayment capacity is going way down. And we're going to need producers and these, these ag lenders, they're going to have to do a lot of restructuring and a, a lot of changes in family living expenses, off-farm income, and et cetera to try to overcome that loss of income. DeVeese suggests a plan that should work regardless of what the coming year's weather brings. So if our producers manage as though this is the beginning of the long-term drought rather than the end, if they do that and we do get the precipitation, they've got options. They can bale hay, store it for next year, they can sell it, they can lease out grazing, they can run stockers, they can delay weaning those calves till later on, put some more weight on them, put some more value. It gives them options. On the other hand, if they're not managing as though this is long-term drought and they keep those stocking rates the same, they, they manage those pastures, those hay metals the same, next year their production, if we go into that long-term drought, is even gonna be lower. They're gonna have reduced stands even farther than they would have their production is going to fall even farther and they're going to fall either far, farther behind. So we want producers to start thinking about managing this as though this drought's going to continue for another eight to ten years and then of course we're all going to pray that it ends today. And this could be the start of another ten-year drought. We just really don't know. Uh, the, the science hasn't advanced enough to, to foretell that type of a result. But we do know that some of the oceanic patterns we're seeing now do resemble those that we saw during the 1950s drought. It's not, certainly not a forecast of a 1950s style drought. Uh, again, the science is just not good enough to do that uh, quite yet. But it's certainly something to be, to be aware of that we do see some of those similar patterns. We all hope that that ends. This drought is over soon, but hope is not a strategy for surviving this financially. So while hope is essential, a solid plan will give you a better night's sleep.